So I have Christian here. He's the founder of Zebedee. Um, and I'll let him describe his company and then we'll just start breaking it down. And ultimately how I didn't end up meeting Christian, but I met a lot of people at the tab conference. So nice, uh, nice. how's it going, Christian? Yeah, it's going great. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah. So as Chris said, I'm, I'm Christian. Um, I'm a co-founder of Zebedee along with Andre Nevis and Simon Cal, and uh, not the Simon Cal from like X Factor, <laughs> but an equally awesome Simon Cal, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, so Zebedee is a Bitcoin gaming company that um, runs um, on the Lightning Network, and we uh, basically the idea is to bring open programmable money to game devs in a way that they can focus on the games, not have to worry about all the complexities around uh, Bitcoin, Lightning regulation, all those types of things. Yeah, so I, I met um, Andre and Yure and a couple of the uh, developers at the yeah. TAB conference. So that's the Atlanta Bitcoin conference back yeah. in November. Uh, that was actually before I even joined Bitcoin Magazine. So I was oh, still right. a fiat pleb uh, kind of in the <laughs> fiat world looking to Great leave. conference to start it with though. Exactly. Yeah, I missed, unfortunately, Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin conference in 2021 and also uh, Bitblock Boom because of just uh, personal commitments on my end. Mm -hmm. So it was really cool going to the TAB conference. It was a smaller conference. I think there was about 350, 400 people. Uh, but I will say, and this is no insult to any of the other companies that were there, but uh, Zebedee really stole the show. I know Andre and uh, Yuri, they brought a bunch of lights. They had like a gaming room and it was like for someone who's a gamer and now runs the Twitch stream and the live stream for this. Uh, it was it was basically like heaven. You're walking in, all these people playing video games, and you're earning Bitcoin by doing so. Yeah, it, it it's such an a simple but amazing thing to do. You know, like like I've been to a lot of conferences, you know, and they're cool, but obviously there's not much to do with Bitcoin apart from just talk to people, maybe buy a beer. But if you just add Bitcoin gaming there, it really just gives the conference an extra dimension. Yeah, definitely. And I think Bitcoiners, uh, or excuse me, I think gamers are uh, most susceptible to understanding inter magic internet money as the meme uh, alludes to that, you know, Bitcoin is internet money and it's permissionless and it can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people that are in the gaming space are more technical, not saying that there are people that aren't, but, uh, you know, they're kind of the ones to experiment with new games, new ideas, uh, whether it's a small indie game or whether it's, you know, a large platform game coming from Blizzard or Microsoft or Sony or, uh, as the such. So I guess, how did you uh, found Zebedee? What made you decide to incorporate Bitcoin and payments and the Lightning Network into it? Yeah, well, um, if it don't mind, I, I might just go a bit kind of how I started, how I got started in Bitcoin and gaming in general, because I actually yeah. started um, in 2013 with Bitcoin and gaming. And uh, I was, I was, it was a lonely time there. It was basically just me and a few other people. Uh, but I was uh, I was in kind of an indie game, well, app developer um, living in Australia at the time. And uh, I was making a, a simple game um, for myself. And then um, I came across Bitcoin uh, just from a client. He wanted us to make a Bitcoin wa wallet. So I kind of didn't know anything about it, uh, but it just seemed awesome that you could have programmable money because at the time you know you could do things with money you could do like in-app purchases but you could you couldn't really do what you wanted right it was you know you basically had to do what that api let you do you know and it was also quite a walled garden so i you know i just like a lot of us do we just want to combine bitcoin with our hobbies and any way we can i did this i thought it'd be cool just to put this um bitcoin into my ios game at the time so the first thing i thought to do was i'll just let people purchase things in the game with bitcoin i got rejected by apple because they didn't you know, especially back then you're not allowed to do that um it's changing a bit now but you're only allowed to accept in-app purchases but i just really wanted to put bitcoin in a game you know so just for fun i just flipped it around and said okay well if i'm not allowed to get bitcoin from the player I'll just give the, the player Bitcoin. And for some stupid reason, I decided to put my Bitcoin in the game and anybody who downloaded it and played the game would just get Bitcoin sent to them. And I just, I didn't know how long it, it would last. Uh, I, I posted a QR code on Reddit saying, uh, hey, hey I've, I've got this game approved on the App Store. It's a great tool to get people onboarded into Bitcoin. Just send Bitcoin to this address and it'll fund the game. And yeah, that kind of worked for quite a while. And that's how I kind of got into Bitcoin gaming. I did a bunch of other different games. And then eventually they all kind of stopped working because uh, on-chain fees became expensive and things didn't scale. And um, at the time, a lot of my contemporaries went over to 
um, other chains which were promising, you know, zero fees. Um, you know, they weren't promising it, but that was the impression. Um, that was Ethereum. It's kind of funny that now that has the fee issue. Uh, but I kind of, I realized that, well, you know, there's no real solution to this. I can see like another chain isn't going to solve it. It's just going to have the same issue if it gets popular. Um, so I kind of, you know, I just kind of was tried batching and, you know, tried a few different things. And then I heard about the Lightning Network. Uh, the founders gave a talk and the white paper came out. And uh, I thought, yeah, that's cool. I'm sure that will come out soon and I can start to build on it. <laughs> Skip forward like four or five years, you know, and eventually it did come out. And this actually ties in with Bitcoin Magazine because um, I actually entered uh, the Lightning Gaming Hackathon at Bitcoin 2019 in San Francisco. And uh, I won that with some sample games I made with the Lightning Network. And then I met Simon Cowell in, per in person. And that was kind of, you know, um, the conference that helped form Zebedee, really. That's so, incredible. That's yeah. an awesome, awesome start. Um, yeah, it, it seems you've been in Bitcoin much longer than me or my uh, host, Alex McShane. So uh, I guess, what was it like in those early days? Like you said, it was kind of just you. Was there any other developers doing uh, programming specifically with games or was it just you at the time? Oh, yeah, yeah, there were. Um, so I think I was the first person, I would say, to probably try and get something on the App Store. Um, just yeah. because um, it was quite difficult to get. Like At the time when I started making it, Bitcoin was completely banned from the App Store. They didn't, they didn't even allow wallets. But my job, I worked for an agency where we would just make apps for anybody who came in, th through the door and had like 20 grand. And so I just, I was used to getting like terrible apps approved by the app store. So I thought, I reckon I could get a Bitcoin game approved. Um, oh, can I just tilt my yeah. camera down a bit? Oh, I just wanted to do this a bit easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, there's just me on mobile, but once it'd been out a while, a, a lot of other folks started to do it. Um, I think in the early days, there was a lot of excitement and probably a bit of a disconnect. I think uh, we didn't really understand the ins and outs of scaling. So, um, you know, probably people who were more developer focused knew that this stuff wasn't really meant for applications. It was at that time. But as far as I was concerned and my contemporaries, we just, you know, we kind of thought, well, this is great. We can put everything on the Bitcoin blockchain and there'll be no issues. And then I started to kind of notice it didn't really work when you know, I started to get a bit of hate on Reddit for spamming the blockchain, which I, I probably was. And um, yeah, to be honest, it got quite contentious. So there was a lot of angst in the community. A lot of this kind of goes into the whole scaling debate where, you know, a lot of my contemporaries were firmly in the big block camp. And I was for a while until I realized if my game could fill up this much block space. And it's it's not popular compared to like a real game, you know, like a real game that's like, you know, Clash of Clans or whatever's popular now is like orders of magnitude. Like it, this stuff doesn't re really scale. Uh, but yeah, it, I think it started off like a honeymoon pe period, but very fast. There was a lot of tension and uh, a lot of people kind of, understandably, a lot of these people had raised money and started companies and their companies were failing because of, you know, the the on-chain fees um yeah so that's kind of what it was like uh, then as i said before a lot of people moved over to um well uh, ethereum was the main one at the time that was the only other one because it, again they thought we can continue to develop games on this for zero fee on that chain and then there was kind of um a dark age of i would say bitcoin gaming where it was just me and like another guy and everybody had left and uh and in a way it was sad that you know i suppose bitcoin gaming kind of died on bitcoin but it was good because when the lightning network came out um i'm yet again an early adopter of it and i have a first mover advantage at zebedee and now i'm starting to see some of the people who are getting you know frustrated with fees on other chains once you showed them the lightning networks here they kind of you know they didn't realize it was a thing and actually we're starting to see them kind of trickle back over yeah for sure and um i think uh, i guess i'll ask you this question do you think that bitcoin right now is going through a similar adoption uh as the internet 
You know, a lot of people say uh, the running joke in a lot of the Bitcoin maximalists is that people say, oh, you know, there's another chain. It's faster. It's cheaper. Exactly to your point of saying like, oh, they're trying to put a whole game uh, through the on chain or, or whatever it may be the equivalent for another altcoin. But uh, do you see it like the internet in terms of it's building in layers? Like, you know, there's kind of a TCIP and then you're kind of built on it. People always joke that when people are saying internet yeah. or ETH, Ethereum or another altcoin saying, oh, it's going to be the next Bitcoin. When other people are like, well, do you use internet one, two, three, four, ten? Like people are always making the joke that everyone uses the same internet. Why wouldn't we just use the same money? And it seems that in this day and age, uh, I wasn't around for the ICOs, but it seems a lot more altcoins are coming out each and every day claiming that they're better for the environment. They're better for yeah. electricity. Yeah. They're better for speed and such. Do you see Bitcoin going through that with currently Bitcoin space chain, then the lightning network, and then probably even third or fourth or fifth tier layers being built on top of Bitcoin? So I agree completely that Bitcoin scales in layers and you can build stuff too early. For, like, for example, I think, was it Blockbuster tried to make a Netflix when the internet came out? It just wasn't going to work, right? So it's a good idea, just the, the wrong timing. Um, to answer your question around other chains, like I've been in this space for a while, so I've seen chains come and go, right? I've seen there's a bunch of like chains which were going to be the gaming chain, and they all disappeared. And now we have ones which are the new gaming chain, which, you know, getting a lot of VC attention. Yeah, they might stick around, but... Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, I take it with a, a pinch of salt because I've seen so many come and go. I would say that um, I think Bitcoin in a way at the moment it, is really doing one thing only and one thing well, and that's payments. And a lot of these other people want other chains because they want to do things other than payments, like, you know, complicated smart contracts or DeFi or NFTs for eight example and yeah of it like there are you know um proposals as you said space chains or things on, on bitcoin um that you know could um do the same thing uh but um they're not going to come out anytime soon uh so in a way i i, I kind of don't i understand when people are going to these other chains um to do something but i i, I kind of feel that you know it, it's kind of a catch 22 situation if you want to do something that's not possible on bitcoin now you can choose some of the other chains out there because that's your only choice so you've got to choose something but whatever you're going to choose is going to be wrong that's kind of how investors see it like they don't want to be too late everybody's you know doing this stuff and they want to be early but nothing is really quite there yet um yeah so it it's one of those things you know like i was lucky that I was independent before. So I didn't really have any like backers or investors. It was just me because I was a programmer. So I can make all the games myself. So I could wait for the tech to come out, you know, like the lightning network. And that's kind of the approach I've taken to stuff like um, tokens and NFTs, because I did um, do a lot on that um, on Bitcoin with counterparty protocol. And my view is that, well, eventually that stuff will work in a more scalable way. But at the moment, I'm, I'm I'm busy with Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. And then once we've got that stuff done, we can start to focus on tokens and stuff. Well, other people are trying to tackle it now. And I would say a, a, a little bit of, um, you know, it's a kind of hacky kind of way, you know. Um, but having said that, I think I think a lot of, I think there's a disconnect. I think a lot of Bitcoiners, um, get angry when they see other chains complaining to be decentralized because they're not decentralized. And it's disingenuous for those chains to say they're decentralized when they don't actually need to be decentralized. Um, a, a lot of what these chains are doing for games, such, a, such as certain NFTs, um, they actually don't need a blockchain or they don't need to be decentralized for most of it. Uh, but they feel they need to say it's a blockchain in order to get investment. So I think that's the big thing we're going to see coming. I think uh, in a few years, uh, they're going to quietly discontinue themselves from the being decentralized and I suppose be more openly centralized um, crypto solutions. And, um, in, and if that happens, it's really quite a different thing from Bitcoin then. I think at the moment now, we tend to compare them, you know, like, well, um, this altcoin, is trying to be a Bitcoin competitor because it's saying it, it, it thinks it, it declares it as decentralized, but uh, ultimately that won't last. And I think we'll just have Bitcoin, which is decentralized, and a bunch of 
crypto services which do stuff with crypto in a centralized way but it's you know it's kind of an honest way so bitcoiners don't mind because they're not lying about being better than bitcoin and uh, those chains are happy because they can just scale without having to put on the decentralized facade and then in the future once the tech is there we might have more actual centralized uh, so de decentralized solutions to do all these things that people might want to do with nft such as space chains or, or or things like that but i think that's going to take a while and in the short term um yeah we're just going to have um you know small centralized but open honest kind of solutions yeah and uh using history as a guide i guess you know history doesn't repeat itself but it rhymes is kind of the infamous quote yeah, you know Mark i kind of what i think i think it was mark twain was it yeah, yeah was it mark twain yeah. yes I, I believe that's that is the quote um but he uh, I guess going with, you know, comparing Bitcoin to the internet, uh, you definitely, I, and I hate saying this, I know I'm going to get flack for this. I know a lot of Bitcoiners think this is the super cycle and this is where we're going to advance or, you know, explode to new all-time highs, which I think will come in time. But I think with just so many countries try, or countries or and or companies trying to look at cryptocurrencies in general and not Bitcoin, uh, you know, anyone that says they have a new crypto coming out, everyone tries to jump on it to pump and dump it and sell it. You know, you see you can look at any of the social media, whether it's Instagram or TikTok or any of these platforms of people saying Dogecoin is going to, uh, you know, six thousand dollars or whatever, all these grandiose uh, grandiose. Uh, comparisons of what they're going to be. I think Bitcoin's going to go through a similar thing like the internet, where in 2000, any company that was saying, oh, we're doing internet things, you know, mm -hmm. pets.com was valued higher than Amazon yeah. ultimately before it crashed. Uh, when it crashes, the cryptocurrency market and Bitcoin will go down in price. Uh, Bitcoin yeah. will probably lead the charge to do so when it goes down and wipe out a lot of the bad projects. But I think Bitcoin will remain and I think Bitcoiners will be very happy to pick up some cheap sats in the... Yeah. Uh, in the short term, uh, and then for the long term appreciation of it. Yeah, well, again, like there's been a, a, a few of those cycles for me, yeah. right? When it's crashed and stuff, but each time it comes back stronger. I, I completely agree. Yeah, and uh, you're just looking at historically at the way Bitcoin does it. You know, in four year cycles. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be as much four year cycles. It, this seems like a prolonged cycle, uh, but we'll we'll see. I guess time will only be the test of that. Um, so I guess when you're scaling onto lightning and stuff, I know when I was at the tab conference, it was very cool seeing a lot of the games you have. Um, I'm drawing a blank on it. I, I know one, it kind of looks like a, a super smash bros in the sense yeah, that it yeah, has yeah. developed one kind of looked like a Mario Kart. Yes. but I think when I really understood it and I understood the importance of what you guys are doing and how this is going to change the world is when we were playing uh, CS go or yeah, counter strike go, that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's our favorite. Yeah, when you see Counter-Strike and that you're seeing that people are receiving Bitcoin in it, not that um, I have nothing against any of the smaller games. I think that's awesome. And, you know, there's definitely a market for that. There's a gigantic market for that. Um, but seeing it in, in a mainstream game that a yeah. lot of people know, you know, I could definitely see how this can integrate so easily with Nintendo or, you know, Microsoft or Sony or any of their games. You know, imagine playing Super Mario Party and you're trying to collect stars or coins and those happen to be sats or Bitcoin. Uh, and I think that would be pretty ingenious. So I guess what's your business model for Zebedee aside from doing uh, putting Bitcoin into games? And then how do you guys uh, have your business model, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, so when we formed the company, we took a decision not to be a game developer studio, uh, just because I've been in the space. I know how hard it is to make a game, and I've seen so many terrible blockchain games. People kind of do that, especially like in the blockchain space. They'll they'll make a token, sell it, and they'll then fund development of like block fighters. And it's an okay game, but it doesn't stand up to like the popular AAA games. Uh, but it, it, as everybody, we had the issue. Well, when we first started, there was no games for anybody to play, right? We haven't got any developers on board or building with us. So we had two choices. One was to make our own internal games, which are the sample games, the Smash Brothers style game you mentioned. Or could we add Bitcoin to a game that people already love? Uh, so we chose to do that to CSGO, you know, and that was uh, great because we can then go to other, we can go to AAA games studios and actually show them a AAA game. Uh, which has Bitcoin integrated into it. So they can actually, you know, it's, they can actually see it. Well, wow. And we can show that once we added Bitcoin to it, like people are playing it more, you know, um, those studios will then say, oh, okay, well, if it works for Counter-Strike, why won't it work for Call of Duty, you know? So we can get those 
conversation started. Um, to answer your question on, on our business model, it's quite simple, really. We basically just take um, a small percentage of the fees, sorry, a, a, a fee of the transactions that go between players, but the amounts are, are very, very low. So with in-app purchases, if you a game dev makes a purchase, Apple will take something like 30%. Um, but we do nano transactions as we call them so we have the uh, games and uh, that do um, you know hundreds of thousands of transactions and they're in the small amount maybe one cents 10 cents each and we just take uh one percent of that or you know a couple of percent and because we have millions of you know transactions and the aim is to have billions of transactions that all adds up so that's the main business model it's simple developers don't mind because it's crazy low compared to any other payment rails out there and um, yeah, the users don't notice it because it's such a, a small amount and everyone's happy. And it's just a, a great, simple model that works. Um, so that's the main business model. You know, there could be other ones that open up as well, going, you know, such a, for example, offer non ramps to fiat, stuff like that. And also something that's interesting, it, it's, um, we, we, it's not our main business model, but it could be interesting to see the routing fees we take on our lightning nodes because we're going to have the most active lightning nodes on the network once we get these, for example, large games on our platform that are doing, you know, millions of transactions each. So that's going to be interesting to see. Uh, but it's hard to kind of predict that because we're kind of, you know, it's we're on the vanguard of actually doing that, you know, and uh, it's kind of a new thing, uh, but that's going to be exciting to see. For sure. And I know uh, Guy Swan, I was listening to one of his episodes, I think back in September, October timeframe, uh, and it was an argument for basically keeping the lightning network for transactions only. So basically transferring mm. money. And uh, I know this is kind of a hot bed topic because a lot of Bitcoiners see if you're telling someone what to do with their Bitcoin or what with their sats, you know, is it really Bitcoin at that point? But I know a lot of people were getting frustrated with basically routing uh, messages with like Sphinx chat, mm -hmm. or if like we start building that you're sending videos across the lightning network and that bogs up the channels. So I can yeah. no longer send you five sats or 20 sats or whatever it may be because other things are getting routed through. Um, he, I guess one of the counters was the, the lightning nodes that have the liquidity could set requirements that they're not going to process this much data. If it's above this amount, I'm not processing it. I'm only mm -hmm. processing low amounts of data, which keep it more restricted to payments. If you want to do higher amounts, you'd have to find a node that would offer or that would accept uh, basically taking all that data packets through their node and you know obviously being compensated for such. Yeah, I, I think so. This is kind of exactly what I saw with on-chain when I was doing games and even tokens on Counterparty were basically using Bitcoin for stuff that wasn't Bitcoin, putting data in there. And the developers, you know, the people tried to kind of stop it. You know, Luke Dash Jr. famously wouldn't like um, relay anything that had an op return in there or, or something. Um, alter, and again, with, with the Lightning Network, I see the same thing happening. I'm kind of sympathetic to both views. I kind of agree that things they need to focus on what they do. It's hard, like if you make something a general purpose thing, it, it kind of leads to all sorts of issues around security and scalability. But then I kind of feel sympathetic for developers who try to, you know, build apps on Bitcoin and were told, no, 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 wait for layer two. And then layer two's come out and be told, no, 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 this is just for payments again. Um, I guess what I would say is I, I thought is there a way for nodes just to ignore that traffic and nodes who want to do it can do it. But there's ways to hide data so a node wouldn't tell if it's a payment or not. So probably on the Lightning Network, fees will probably become a thing. You know, uh, they'll probably be. I think they have to be more expensive than they are now. Generally on the network, of course, if you just have like a single channel, for example, if you're a game developer, you have a, a direct channel to Zebedee, and um, we have a direct channel to a user. Then we can kind of keep those fees much well virtually zero or a lot lower but fees will probably just have to um, get to a point where it stops some of the kind of i guess not well spam i suppose or you know uh but also um isn't too high that it would stop regular payments i think when stuff like um you know it's maybe space chains or drive chains or, or whatever they come out that might just take a lot of the pressure off and people will probably prefer to do it there just because the lightning network is still quite it's limited to what you can do, but I'd imagine on something like a side chain or a space chain, 
you could do a lot more, you know, because it's just, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want. And then there's obviously, you know, there's stuff like simplicity and all this stuff. So I think, I guess, using my experience, I would tell developers, like, sometimes it's better just to wait for the right tech to come out rather than trying to build it, you know, too soon. Um, but we'll see what happens. Like, it's it's permissionless, so people are going to do it. And, yeah, all, all we can do is kind of raise fees and try to, you know, yeah. I think that's awesome. Uh, I know. Uh, so, so I guess what's next for Zebedee in terms of, uh, you know, I guess you guys, I don't want to say you guys are cutting out the middleman, but you you guys are in a sense, because I know we're very privileged here in the United States. I think uh, you said you're calling from the UK, uh, not to dox you too much, but um, a lot of like, from my accent, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I know, so Visa and MasterCard are kind of, they seem to be the, um, the ones that are holding the power, the, the keys basically. Uh, in, in doing so, I know that they charge in at least the Western world or a lot of the uh, G7 nations, it seems to be that their percentage that they take is anywhere from 1.5% to 3% for transactions. And a lot of times us as consumers that use credit cards uh, don't necessarily see that. You know, Normally it shows up that the, the vendor has to eat the fee, but in doing so, they'll just raise their prices the one and a half to 3% and then you know, they push it back on the customer. Uh, ultimately, you guys are trying to cut out the Visa and MasterCards and do it at fractions of a cost by comparison. Um, so do you see, I guess not, do you see competition from Visa and MasterCard coming into the same realm? Uh, and I guess, how would you compete against them? Um, not particularly, um, just because, you know, unless they start to get into the Lightning Network, then we may be concerned. Um, but uh, anyway, that would, you know, that could be good for the Lightning Network in general. Uh, but again, it goes back to having an open programmable money, the one that is permission. So uh, I, I get this question a lot, especially from game de game developers. Like, why can't I just use, why do I need to use Bitcoin? Why can't I just use like, you know, dollars or euros or pounds? And I think with Bitcoin, if we use the lightning network, you basically, you are linked to the ever-growing ecosystem. So you know, if I use, you know, MasterCard or Visa and I get some pounds, you know, I can't just use that pounds in a game easily, you know. But what we see with Zebedee is um, one example, um, a kind of funny example is that people would play our games at a conference and they get some Bitcoin to their Lightning wallet. It could be our Lightning wallet or it could be another Lightning wallet. So the user already has a choice of what wallet they want to use but they still get the same bitcoin and then they can use that in another game which is made by a, a different developer or they can go to el salvador and use it at the mcdonald's there or they can use it to feed chickens on polyfeed and the more apps that are added and apps and use cases that are added to the ecosystem it makes the stats and the bitcoin you get even more functional where obviously with pounds, you know, you can convert it and you could send, you know, you could send it via bank transfer, but you just don't have the, you know, zap. It's their kind of frictionless thing. And they probably won't have it unless, you know, maybe MasterCard might get into some sort of stable coin, for example, perhaps. And, you know, everybody accepts Tether, but um, I just think you then have other issues you get into, for example, like single points of failure. And uh, also that's going to be quite regulated um yeah so not really concerned about that i think um just the open source nature of bitcoin means that you know in the long term we'll outcompete on features and usability and that's what we've seen in tech for a while right you know like vhs versus beta max or all these kind of closed ecosystems intranets versus internet the you know on the long term horizon the open source solutions win because it's more free it's easy to use and there's more things that you can do with it definitely um so i guess i had someone in the chat that keeps yelling that we've uh, on youtube at least that we have to talk about minecraft so i guess they're talking about okay. do you have plans to uh, expand to putting your games on minecraft i guess i know the reason that you guys use counter-strike because it's an open source game i believe it was uh, a, mm -hmm. an addition or a change to gary's mod is that right or is that half-life am i thinking am i so counter-strike was a, a fork of half-life originally i believe mm -hmm. and like half-life was that from 
I think everything came from like the Quake Doom engine or Doom engine originally. Yeah, well, it's exactly. interesting tree, but yeah, uh, actually, Counter Strike was an open source. Um, originally, I was going to do it with Quake because that's what I played growing mm-hmm. up, and I, I heard Quake was open source. So I actually went to get the source code of Quake, which is open source, but only the source code was open source. The assets and the name weren't open source, so you basically ah. have a game with no characters, and you have to get like make new skins. Uh, and then somebody pointed out that like Counter Strike is more popular than Quake, uh, but yeah, it it's not that Counter Strike was open source. It's just that Counter Strike it's it lets you run your own server and you can do mods and plugins. That's the key thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you you know obviously we we don't know exactly how the source code works. Well, we kind of have a good idea, but we can write a mod or a plugin which puts a Bitcoin in the game, right? That somebody can go and pick up and get some stats. Uh, to answer your question, yeah, we we have looked at other games as well. Um, so we there's there's so many games that people want whether it's like dota or minecraft um there's no short-term plans to do it we kind of um because like i said before we we are our main business model are making the tools for developers to build games so that's kind of what we're focused on at the moment and we're working with some really cool studios to bring out who are, are working on some awesome games that I, I can't talk about uh so we're focusing on that but i would say if anybody out there has some minecrafting modding skills and they want to focus on that hit us up and we can you know give you access to our tools and sdk and you can use the zebedee sdk to add bitcoin to minecraft or any other game so that's what i'd say that's incredible yeah so i guess not that it i guess not that your company runs into roadblocks but i guess it does for uh, a lot of the lp or the ip of companies that hold uh, basically the rights to the game. Like, uh, I guess we would all love to see it plug into Nintendo or Microsoft or Sony, but obviously they hold the rights to the game. So I guess when you guys go to them, do you show or do you pitch like, hey, it works on all these games. Maybe, you know, cutting out the middleman such as Visa or MasterCard would be a good idea that they can recoup even more fees. They pay you a smaller percentage than they're paying Visa and MasterCard and just kind of showing them the benefits of uh, an open and uh, open interoperable monetary system. Yeah, so we have spoken to some large studios, some kind of household names, and um, it's kind of good and bad. So the good is like people are really excited about this, you know, and, you know, they get it and they want to innovate and everybody's thinking like, what's the next thing in gaming? We kind of had VR, but what's the next thing we can do? Is like cloud gaming. So they're very interested in Bitcoin. Um, but a lot of these game companies, they they won't risk it on their AAA titles just yet. So uh, what, uh, what they actually a lot of these AAA companies, they actually secretly have smaller studios, which aren't really publicly known that they're associated with, with smaller games. And that's, they kind of try in those games first. And once they start to work in those games, then then they'll kind of slowly build up to their uh, bigger IPs. And at the moment, there is a lot of like, you know, FUD about, for example, you know, Bitcoin and green energy. So that is something we, we need to tackle as a community because there's, not even with Bitcoin, but just say NFTs in general. Like if a game company announces they're doing stuff with crypto, a lot of gamers don't like it because they, they start to say it's harming the planet. So that is something we need to focus on. But I think that'll pass. You know, it obviously started with it's for terrorists and then it's for this. And now the, the current thing is it, it, it's not green. But I think, you know, there's there's an active, you know, like Jack Dorsey and Square Crypto are going to be working on some PR and greening mind stuff. So I think that'll pass. I think once that has passed, um, we'll start to see them coming on board. And um, yeah, once they've tried it in their um, smaller titles. And I know it works. So we've tried it on. See, it's like every game we put Bitcoin into, it's just increased the retention rate and increased the number of players. And it's really easy. We had a game that added, it's a mobile game, a hyper casual game but they added bitcoin to their game in like a week with our api you know that's funny. um so yeah yeah no christian there, there's a great way to uh counter hecklers i actually orange pill the heckler so i was streaming i'm the twitch live uh, twitch project manager as well as a live stream live stream producer uh and the way that i did that is someone came in while i was streaming on twitch one of the mornings a couple weeks ago and they're like i hate bitcoin because our name is you know the bitcoin handle on twitch 
Yeah. And uh, they were like, I hate Bitcoin. It's horrible. It's so bad for the environment. You guys are jacking up the price of all the GPUs. Yeah, yeah. I can't get a graphics card. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not Bitcoin. That's Ethereum and all other altcoins. He's like, wait, really? I was like, yeah, it's unprofitable to mine using a GPU for Bitcoin. They're using know, ASICs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and so, yeah. so I said that to him. And then he's like, oh, really? I was like, yeah, Bitcoin's a good thing. And so I converted this guy that was a heckler into now a Bitcoin or at least, you know, tolerable or liking it. So one step yeah, at a time. I, I think... Also telling people that the Lightning Network is like the most green way to use Bitcoin because, you know, um, one, it, you know, if you think that one Bitcoin tr transaction burns X amount of, of carbon, then instead of doing one Bitcoin transaction with the Lightning Network for the same amount of carbon, you can do a, a million um, transactions because obviously it's just the transaction to open the channel. So in a way, this is this is the carb pooling of bitcoin in a way but you know the car pooling on steroids or something you know uh so that's something i think people don't realize so yeah you know i think it's all about education and you know i'm um, just getting people in that know and you know i think but eventually wears itself out and we'll start to see real growth so like we have great stories like i have a lot of people who kind of say well this doesn't make any sense like why would I, I do this or you know bitcoin is like um is it is it true that like it's uneven and unequal and then I, i'll show like a tweet from we had a player of this counter-strike csgo from um south america who was like you know young kid and he uploaded this picture that he's managed to pay his rent on time now because he earned bitcoin on um with Zebedee on CSGO and you know he's helped his dad pay off his debts and all you know all these kind of stories and like he's earning more than he could get at a job but he can't find a job so I think those are the stories we start we need to um, promote more and they're out there you know I completely agree and you know, like I said, you and I come from uh, G7 nations or nations yeah. with like kind of booming economies. But, you know, you look at the El Salvador's, you look at the Argentinas of the world, the Greece's, the, um, you know, the Venezuela, the list goes on and on. And, you know, us coming from countries that typically export our, um, our currencies, or at least the U.S. dollar does, because it's, you know, it's the way that we denominate energy or barrels of oil. We're very privileged to be in the situation that we're in, having strong currencies relative to the weak ones. Um of these countries where they see extreme hyperinflation of, you know, 15, 20, yeah. 30, 50 percent per month over a month. Uh, yeah. And Bitcoin's a great equalizer. Uh, you know, President Bukele is very smart in the way that, you know, he's adopting Bitcoin to help his people. I know many Bitcoin maxis are very wary about him. And, you know, I agree with their sentiment of kind of always being don't, cautious. Don't trust verify, right? <laughs> yeah, it, uh, being cautiously optimistic about any politicians. You know, a lot of Bitcoiners love Senator Lummis, and I'm in that camp as well. But I'm just kind of cautiously optimistic is the way that uh, I look at it for any any one of them. Uh, you know, I still think it's good to support them. I heard an argument by a Bitcoin mechanic on Adam Meister's podcast recently saying that he hates when politicians or countries or other things are adopting it. He has the counter argument for, for that. He says that Bitcoin thrives when countries are trying to ban it, when they're trying to make it more difficult to use. That's really when it shows its resiliency. And that's really when it gains its trust uh, or trustless network or, you know, don't trust verify and that, you know, it really works. Nigeria, when they banned it, they saw an increase on black market Bitcoin went up like basically 20, 25 percent of the cost that you could normally buy on if it was a regulated exchange. Uh, so I, I think Bitcoin's here to stay. I think you're in the same camp. Uh, what I guess, what do you see next for Zebedee or what are you guys trying to do next? And what what limits you guys to only games and not to be a payment processor for, for anything, yeah. for plugging it in for anything? Yeah, well, we're just basically growing this year. We're bringing, we're going to double our staff. Um, and we just, there's so much stuff we need to build. Um, a lot of the stuff that um, we are focusing on is because if we want the larger game studios, and I think the best way to kind of orange pill people is to get them earning Bitcoin in games, especially when they're seeing inflation, right? You know, a lot of young people don't really know what inflation is until now. So if we can orange pill them through these huge games, that would be a win for Bitcoin. However, these games aren't really going to touch Bitcoin until they're, you know, they're, they're, they're happy that, you know, about the, you know, the various regulations and licenses. So we kind of are focusing on covering that for game developers. So if you're a game developer and you want to use Bitcoin, if you use it through Zebedee, you don't have to worry about any, you know, legal issues. Um, we have probably best to get me back on once they're more public, but we have some like um, cool games 
studios who are actively building with us now. So it takes a bit of time to make a game, but later on this year, they're going to be released. Uh, we got the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire um, IP building a game on mobile. I think, I think it's actually out on mobile. It's, it, it's a casual game, but yeah. So I just say we're growing and we, we're onboarding game devs and we're going to have um, awesome games coming out. Um, to answer your second question, yeah, um, we, we thought about this when we co-founded the company and we just thought, I think as a new company to kind of take on the huge giants of payments, it's it's quite a big challenge. So it probably makes sense just to focus on something smaller as the way in. Um, and gaming is something that is being neglected with with Bitcoin. A lot of other companies are trying to do for for general payments, but I, in a way, it's starting to take off. But general payments hasn't really taken off too much. Uh, because people don't like to spend their Bitcoin, uh, but with gaming we can actually get the you know target the the play to earn market and also the competitive play. So um, you know it actually gives it's a great way for people to just get Bitcoin um, through through games. You know, which if we were doing general payments, it, it feels a bit more like we're kind of taking on the Bitcoin copy market you know which you know which which is it's cool but yeah i think gaming is where it, and i can't speak for the other co-founders but uh because they you know, had their own reasons but i was a, a game developer so that's you know one of the reasons why i did it but we're focused on gaming um in the future who knows i think i think gaming is merging into the real economy so we have a distinction now less and less so between games and general payments. But I think that in a few years, you know, it's going to be somewhat the same thing, right? So um, you might, you know, your consumer shopping could be in a game and it's not really, it's not really just a game to you. It's actually part of your, your social life um, for better or for worse. So yeah, we kind of think at Zebedee that the virtual economy at some point, you know, it's going to overtake the physical bricks and mortar economy. And it's probably, majority going to be in gaming we've, we've seen like the gaming um industry is already worth more than the movie and the music industry and it's just, it's just getting bigger and bigger yeah i think um it, yeah it's pretty incredible I, I that kind of sounds like a dystopian nightmare for me you know yeah, we're all plugged so, in and doing our own thing i guess i'll let you give your take well, on that you can see behind me like i've actually got like you know an acoustic piano there and i've got guitars so yeah a lot of I'm not big on the metaverse as a place we'll live, but I'm big on the metaverse as a place we'll visit. Did that make sense? So I think I see games as obviously people can get addicted to them, uh, but I think it's all about having a healthy balance. And one of the things that motivates me is that a lot of people play games all the time and maybe too much, and they don't actually get anything for it. You know, they they might get pleasure, but the, you know, they're not really financially improving themselves. But adding Bitcoin and real money to games could actually just make games, um, being in a game, a bit less, you know, um, what's the word? I, I I don't want to sound derogative here, but, you know, a bit more meaningful and a bit more important. And yeah, so, um, yeah, I agree with you, you know, like, I don't want to live in like a ready play one style world, but I think it would be a cool place to visit now and then and, and earn some Bitcoin in. Yeah, I forget what year it was. I think it was either 2011 or 2012. Um, there was a, um, it was StarCraft. I think they had a StarCraft tournament and it was in South Korea. And the winner won like, I think maybe 10 grand or 25 grand. And then places two through six, uh, they were teams. Uh, they won 25 Bitcoin. I think it was four person teams. So oh, each yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. Each person got like 6.25 Bitcoin. And, you know, you'd love to see if, if they just held on or if they sold it once it went up or if they sold it when it went down or, you know, kind of see if, any of the players that if they held didn't, on. If they didn't lose it and found it later, they would have sold it. That's the thing, right? I think the best people are the people who lost it and then found it, you know. Uh, but, yeah, but we've had the similar thing at Zebedee, actually. So when Zebedee started... 2019 the price was lower and we had tournaments where we were giving away you know um big chunks of bitcoin in my early games in 2013 i was giving away you know um you know um 0.1 bitcoin now and then the kind of stuff like that right so it all adds up but you know that could happen with sats now you know we um have games where people are just you know getting you know 
thousand, few thousand sacks a day, for example, or even more with Counter Strike. And you know, who, who knows? That could be worth um, something insane in 10, 20 years, or it will be worth to the moon. Should state that it's going to happen. Definitely. Um, go yeah. Up. Yeah, don't don't give away your Bitcoin to anyone. Uh, I'm always trying to earn it. I'm not trying to lose any. Uh, yeah, I've sent it to people to show how it works and stuff like that uh, to try and orange fill people. I know even uh, Alex, or my host, was bringing this up before. I heard in the early days, maybe you're familiar with this, back in the Reddit days, it was actually frowned upon to hold your Bitcoin. It was called hoarding, and people were like against it. I don't know if that was predates you, uh, but there was well, a lot of people. A little bit. I remember, so I was actually, the main when I got into Bitcoin, I was actually living in Tokyo. And there was a Bitcoin meetup there was run by Roger Ver. <laughs> and um, it was very much about using Bitcoin. So R- Roger Ver, to his credit, actually, he basically got like so many restaurants and bars in Tokyo accepting Bitcoin. So when we went to the meetup, it was like, hey, these this restaurant has, has actively decided to accept Bitcoin. Let's all buy our, our drinks of Bitcoin. And everyone was like, yeah, and secretly pay with cash because they don't want to hold the Bitcoin. And I had a friend there who over, he's with going there since like it started like 2000, maybe 11, 2012. And he's like, yeah, I think he said he spent like 10 Bitcoin on beer. <laughs> so, oh my God. But, you know, if did that early, he, he, he probably has like a lot more than 10 anyway. So he's probably doing all right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? uh, but yeah, so it's, it's funny. For sure. Um, all right. So, I mean, I guess that's pretty much I have for you. I'm excited to see you uh, at the conference. I guess you guys and Zebedee at the conference. Uh, it's going to be awesome. I think you guys are going to blow people away. I definitely got that treatment at the tab conference. And uh, I think you guys are going to bring uh, an even better booth for Bitcoin. Yeah. 22. It's going to be great. Go there. Like it's, it's just like, obviously I'm going to say this because it's my company, but going to a conference and just playing like Counter-Strike or even, you know, if Counter-Strike's too hard, we have like a Mario Kart style game. And just to do that and, uh, and win Bitcoin is amazing. You can probably get the price of your ticket back if you play it enough. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I definitely got my uh, the price of my ticket back for the tab conference. So I was playing a bunch of games while I was there. It was before I'm in the industry. So I know Alex and I and a lot of people from Bitcoin Magazine who are hosting the conference are be running around with their heads cut off, basically. Uh, but it'll be a fun time nonetheless. For those that don't have their tickets, go to b.tc forward slash conference. Use the code YTMAG or YTMAG for 21% off your tickets. Uh, Christian, like I said, thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything else you want to send off uh, before you sign out of here? I would just um, tell people, if you want to start playing Bitcoin and gaming, follow us on Twitter, uh, at Zebedee. Uh, but we also have a special uh, Twitter account for actual, just for the games, um, which I encourage you to follow. And that is, um, the handle there is, uh, it's uh, at ZBD underscore play. Go to zebedee.io, you'll, you'll find it. But follow that Twitter. We have these quests going on weekly where you can download these really easy to play mobile games and just kind of earn Bitcoin for fun, you know. So play it yourself, introduce your friends to it. If you've got a friend who you want to get into Bitcoin, just send them over there. They can play a game, get Bitcoin. It, it, it's it's pretty awesome experience. Christian, thank you so much for coming on. I know I already talked to Yuri and Mark. Uh, my goal is to get... Um, uh, people playing games, uh, or I'm going to be playing some of the Zebedee games or that are integrated with Lightning on Twitch in the coming weeks. So leading up to the conference, I'll be streaming from Twitch, playing some of the games. That's my goal. Uh, so it'll be awesome. excited to see that and do that on there. And then I'm excited to meet you guys in person uh, again at the conference. Like I said, April 6th through 9th in Miami. So it should be a good time. Uh-huh.